Hey, Photo World, welcome back to another episode here on TakingTalkPics.com. This is another episode from the former podcast. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join the email list. Let's get to that 1,000 subscriber marker so that way I can add a new video every single week. Enjoy. Welcome, Photo World, to Take and Talk Picks, episode 19. In the photography industry in general, that idea of other photographers being your competition has kind of gone out the window. Today's featured guest is Lee Miller. Lee is from Overland Park, Kansas. However, her photography keeps her jumping from Kansas to California and back again. As a wedding and lifestyle photographer of 11 years, Lee has a lightness to her work, but never sacrificing the crisp emotion and gentle time moments that shine throughout her work. Lee, welcome to Take and Talk Picks. Thank you, Robert. Thanks for having me. I've given just a very brief overview of you and little description of the work you do, but could you share with Photo World a little bit more about yourself and your photography business? Um, sure. Well, I, I do live in Overland Park, Kansas, um, but I do travel all over doing photography. I've been, like you said, doing photography for 11 years. Um, I started my business in California and we moved in 2009 to Overland Park. So I still have a strong base in California and I've just been lucky enough to get a strong base on the East Coast too in New York. So um, those are the two places that I spend the most time. So we came here in 2009 and I was pregnant with twins in 2010 and I had the twins in 2011. And so I have kind of um, scaled back on the amount of work that I do, but I'm starting this year's the year that I'm really picking it back up again and planning to hit it hard and um, start traveling and shooting all over again. So I've just been very fortunate to be able to shoot all over the world. And I'm, I would say that I'm just really um, all about storytelling. That's my big, that's my passion right there. I don't know how you did it. That's the perfect segue into what I always say after the introduction is, you <laughs> okay. know, we're all about sharing stories. So, I mean, yeah. that's that's awesome. Okay. I mean, we didn't plan this photo world, but, you know, Lee's, <laughs> Lee's on. So, Lee, to get the inspiration flowing before we get into your story and the ups and downs and everything that can happen in between, I like to get everybody a little bit more charged up and learn what kind of keeps people going. And the way I do that is, you know, I ask you to share and a mantra or some sort of quote that you live by on a daily basis? Well, I feel like that would be, well, clearly uh, it's just, it's beyond photography in the photo world, but um, just be kind and generous and thoughtful. And that's, that's, those are my main goals. And I think those goals kind of came out of, of raising. Now I have four children. And so when I think about how I want to live my life and how I want them to be when they grow up, those are the those are the first words that come to mind, and of course that does carry over in in into your business, um, and also genuine. And I think that's a big thing when it. I think that's really big when it comes to for me it is anyway when it comes to um, working with your clients and working in photography. I just want everything just to feel really genuine. I can't be somebody that I'm not. And developing that relationship with your clients, I think just, be, you know, just being all those things just really helps because you really need your clients to trust you. And that's that's a huge thing. Yeah. Photo world. Be genuine. Be authentic. Be kind. I mean, it doesn't matter what you shoot at all. In one way or right. another, you're going to be working with people. So be kind, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. That's a really good way to look at your business life, too. So I love it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Can you share what sparked your interest in photography enough to actually pursue it as a career? Well, I don't think this is an uncommon story. I got into I got into photography, um, really looking at wedding photography when I was planning my own wedding. And I was working as a therapist at a children's hospital doing therapy with families and kids mostly. In the summer, I took a photography class in summer school at the community college in San Diego. And I think I got a C, <laughs> but um, anyway, so I happened to be at a training for chemical dependency for my therapy license. And the girl next to me was planning her wedding. One thing led to another and I ended up shooting her wedding because she didn't have a big budget. She was willing to take a chance on me. And so that's how I got my first wedding, but when I was 
planning my wedding, I found uh, wedding photography was just amazing. I mean, I hadn't looked, really looked at that for a long time or maybe ever, but, you know, I picked up a copy of PDN and the top knots and there were, you know, images by Meg Smith and Anna Cooperberg. And I just thought, wow, wedding photography can be really cool. And this is way more than just taking staged photos of people on their wedding day. That's that's how I got into it and just picked up that first wedding by sheer luck. And as things kind of grew, people started referring weddings to me and engagement sessions. Um, and so there came a point where I had to pick. I was too busy and I had to decide, do I want to continue on doing therapy or do I want to give this photography thing a shot? And I thought, well, I can always go back to doing therapy if it doesn't work. And now it's been 11 years. So apparently it's been working and the proof is always in the pudding, right? I mean, I'm yes. looking at your website and I've been taking a look at it for a couple of days here preparing for our interview and it's definitely paid off to be the right decision. Uh, not that that means you're not a good therapist or something. I don't know <laughs> any bit of that. Let's just, I want to be out there and make sure I, yes, I have no okay. grounds to speak on for that. So I don't want Well, wanna... therapy is kind of my retirement plan, so... <laughs> But as far as the photography goes, it was a great decision and it's beautiful work. So thank you. Thank it's, you very much. It's good that you're here to share it with us. And Lee, as we're getting into the story, we have, you know, a lot of great highlights and it's true. We get to do what we love for a living, but it doesn't come easy all the time. There are times where we have to learn the hard way. And I'm wondering if you could recall a time where something just might have been more of a failure moment than, you know, a success story and you learned the hard way, but you're better for it now. Well, I do, I do think when you start in photography, you have this kind of maybe rose colored glasses on about the business and, you know, how it's going to be. And then reality kind of hits you about, you know, the business side of it, because a lot of us just like to be artists and, and, and do beautiful work and they don't really want to deal with the business side of it. And then there's also just, you know, the, the, what seemed like mundane day-to-day -day task that you have to do and and kind of the routine that you go through with every wedding. And I think one thing that comes to mind when you ask me about a failure moment was I have uh, second shooters that work with me. And I had um, a guy who'd worked for me for quite a while. He was a great guy. I love him. Great, great photographer. We worked together really well. So he would shoot and go home and back back up and then, you know, send the images to me. And well, one wedding, he put it on his computer, but he didn't put it on. He didn't back it up at another place and he lost the images. So that definitely changed second shooter shoot on my cards. All the cards go home with me. And, you know, I mean, ultimately I'm responsible. That was my, my fault and my responsibility. And then that led me into kind of the great thing, the way that turned out was, of course, I needed to make amends with the client. And so they received a free wedding album and they were so happy with the way the whole situation was handled because sometimes bad things are going to happen. Like that's something you can prevent, but sometimes just bad things are going to happen and there's nothing you can do about it. But I did go on to shoot the brother-in-law of this bride um, later on. So I think, you know, another piece of that is just when those bad things happen, how you, ha how you resolve it with the client as a business person um, and knowing that like, you know, you're shooting one of the most important days of their life and, and things are going to happen. So I think, you know, there were, there was a kind of a technical lesson there and kind of a, uh, you know, working with people lesson there that I learned in that. So, yeah, and it's great. I mean, referrals are going to be a huge part of your business. And so the way you handle something when it, when it does go wrong, um, and if that client will go ahead and refer another wedding to you, that really says a lot about what you did there. So mistakes will happen. Things will happen. Don't beat yourself up. Just do, do what you can to make it right and just kind of move on. Right. And I mean, specifically with weddings, aside from just the photography, the side you're handling in a wedding, something's going to go a little haywire for a bit. And, you know, just that approach and knowing that it's going to happen, whatever it is, you got to be able to move through it and move past it quickly, but correctly. 
or, you know, with a smile on your face kind of thing and doing it right. to the best of your ability, you know, that'll help you just on every wedding. Don't stress about that kind of stuff. Just be ready for it at any moment. And then when it goes on, be there to do the best you can to hopefully diffuse that situation or calm down a, a bride that may be freaking out about the flowers being late or whatever the case may be, you know? <laughs> So, because something always happens at a wedding, and if it's on your end, just start to think about the preventative measures you can take to make sure you're backing up your own possible shortcomings. You know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there there are going to be those technical failures and stuff that happen. So, yeah, just be ready for them, and and you know, treat your client how you would want to be treated if that happened to you. I guess. What would you consider to be the most important practice of your photography? Is there something that kind of stands out in your workflow that has to be there for every job along the way? When you when you say workflow, are you talking about like post-processing or are you just talking about the process of how I do? I think I'll broaden it to the business where, you know, from initial contact to delivery of the images and anything from any job, any aspect that really stands out that's always there in every single job. I think um, I think what I what I do is just is just to be genuine and real with your clients. I can't I can't be something that I'm not. And so I like to you know my approach is very laid back. When I meet clients, we almost don't spend a whole lot of time talking about the wedding at first. I just want to get to know them and who they are and how they met and what's their story. And I guess that's probably just the therapist in me. <laughs> and I really like you know you have to establish this relationship because trust is huge that so you're going to be photographing their wedding day you might be doing their engagement and you might you know be asking them to do kind of like you know lay down in this field no just you know you're standing on top of them just trust me it's okay i'm gonna you know i know what i'm doing so you know and and I always tell brides, you know, the person you're going to interact most with on your wedding day is going to be your photographer. And you really need to be comfortable with that person. And, you know, honestly, there's sometimes that I meet with a couple and we're not a good fit. And I think you have to be able to acknowledge that and move on. Of course, I'm doing photography as a business and it's my livelihood and how I support my family. But you know, there's nothing worse than ending up with a wedding where you're not a good fit. And, you know, because you just really want to be happy. You want that trust. You want to be able to tell that story. I want the day to unfold very organically. I'm not going to interrupt or interfere. I'm just going to kind of be like a watcher and photograph, you know, photograph things as they happen, capture those moments. And even when I work with a couple, I want it to be very organic and natural. When I think about how I approach every every wedding, everything, I would say I want to document their day, tell their story, and I want it just to be feel very natural and organic for, for them. You know, I just I just want them to feel very comfortable. And really, I hope every couple leaves a wedding and says, you know, this was the easiest part of the day. We love this. And so that's I guess that's kind of how I approach every wedding just in a very it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And it's really nice at the end of a wedding day when a family member or the couple themselves will kind of approach and go, it kind of feels like we didn't even see you all day. So like, and yes. they just already know that it's covered, you got it. But this like, this weird comfortability with the fact that it felt like you weren't there, you know, and, right. and they know it's happening. So it's, it's a weird phenomenon because on the one hand, it's like, if you weren't there, uh, where are the pictures, right? And then the other hand, it's like, okay, it's kind of nice that they're out of the way. I don't feel any stress from them. I mean, the person who brought in the cake was freaking out and the photographer is just so easygoing. Like it can be anything, but that helps people just relax because there's nothing weirder than having a camera pointed at you all day long. Yeah. <laughs> well, one little trick about that is just to, and I learned this and um, I've done the foundation workshop a couple of times, the getting ready, you know, it's usually just the bride and the, and the bridesmaids and the moms. Um, and just go in there and just, you know, get right in their face and with the camera and, and then be like, this is, this is the closest I'm going to be to you all day. And then everything else just feels so far away. <laughs> so <laughs> That's awesome. And a nice little tip there, photo world. So take that with you when yeah. you're getting into portraiture or weddings or whatever you might be pursuing. And then also, I just wanted to call out, I think you've said being genuine and being kind three, four, maybe five times now. So it's got to mean something. All right, photo world. I mean, listen up here because this is important. Um, and I'm, I'm repeating it. So we're doubling down on that, that one little emphasis of something to say to you. Uh, be kind, be genuine, be yourself and go into it politely. So 
Lee, we have a wide range of photographers listening. Could you share with Photo World one thing that you believe would lead to growth and success in their business, regardless of whatever level they may be at today? You know, I would say, again, that kind of goes back to relationships. And of course, your clients, that relationship is important and they're going to be your biggest source of referrals. But your second largest source of referrals are other wedding photographers. And so get to know the other wedding photographers and think about it a little bit differently, not like they're competition. I mean, they are, you know, and sometimes I have friends and we're vying for the same wedding, but that's okay because I feel like everybody ends up where they should and you get the people that you should and, you know, the, the other people find their, their photographer or soulmate or whatever out there too. But other photographers are really, they're, they're my second biggest um, source of referrals. And also I never, I never just tell a bride I'm booked, you know, good luck. I always refer that wedding out. I always send it to another person. If somebody is under my budget, I find somebody who fits their budget and send them to that person. I always want to, you know, to help them find somebody. They will remember that. I mean, from a business standpoint, they will remember that. Other photographers will appreciate the referrals and they will refer back to you and just keeping, you know, that relationship. And then my third largest source of referrals would be wedding coordinators. So, you know, don't forget them. And it's, you know, they send a wedding my way. You know, I don't, there's, it's nice to send them a thank you card and maybe a, a little gift or a gift and say, thank you so much for thinking of me. So again, I think it just goes back to building relationships and um, probably the biggest surprise to me um, as I got into this was that other photographers are going to be a great source of referrals, great source of learning and sharing, you know, take advantage of that, make friends with the other photographers in your community. Here we, you know, people get together, we have discussion groups, round tables, talk about what's going on in the industry, what we could be doing better, give feedback about websites, um, you know, so we're kind of all in it together. And I think, I mean, for me, and I think in the photography industry in general, that idea of other photographers being your competition has kind of gone out the window. Exactly. In any business, most CEOs or entrepreneurs or business owners will tell you that the key to success is networking, you know, mm -hmm. and it comes down to finding those people in your own industry, sharing ideas, helping one another out because it comes back around. It really does. It always, it always does share with one another. They're going to do the same with you. So just be a more of an open book. I think there's enough out there for all of us. So network, be kind. These are all good points as repetitive as it may sound. I don't care. This is perfect. So <laughs> Well, good. I'm glad I could offer something here. <laughs> You're offering a ton already, so don't worry about that. And if you could share with us an aha moment that you've had during your career, something that kind of just that light bulb went off and it, it led you to the next steps of whatever it is you were doing. You know, that, that, that is, that's a good question. And it's kind of one that's hard for me to pinpoint down what if I had like an aha moment, I think as I was getting into photography and, and left my, my day job, it kind of felt like I couldn't believe this was really happening. Wow, these people from all over are hiring me to shoot their weddings. It doesn't really seem real. So I, I just think that in, in some ways it still doesn't seem, seem real. Even after 11 years, something will come along and just kind of surprise me and, and just be something I don't know, different that I get to do or a new place I get to go or so I don't I know it's really hard for me to answer that question, the aha moment question. But I think that, you know, I just kind of struggled with, is this really happening? Or, you know, is this is this where I'm going? And, you know, it clearly it's worked out and it's my business has gone through different phases. Um, moving and having twins and, um, you know, that kind of thing, it, it, it definitely slowed down and it had, and it, and it kind of had to slow down, but, um, now I'm really ready to kind of gung ho back into it and, you know, shoot. So I, I don't know if I really answered your question cause I'm not really sure I had an, I think you moment. did. I think it's been a, a combination <laughs> of many little aha moments where it's created the changes and the growth in your business where, having the move from California and then finding that your business is actually coast to coast and 
you know, balancing that and how it's going to work. It's just these little things that kind of, you know, the little light goes off for you and, okay, what do I do with that? And then you make it work and the next level comes where, okay, we're expanding our family here. You know, what do I do with that? All right, we're going to make it work. And, and you make that shape your business. So I think you've had plenty of little aha moments that are kind of an overarching umbrella of what your business is modeled after. So I think you answered it quite well, actually. Okay. <laughs> so people think they're not giving good answers and I'm, maybe I'm just hearing it the way I want to hear it, but it sounds so <laughs> strong, you know, and I hope photo world is right there with me where they're like, okay, so life can happen and you can grow business and you can have to move and you can grow business. Like it's not going to stop just because of something going on in your every day. So I think it's That's kind true. of inspiring. That's true. Um, you know, and, and you do have to be able to change and grow and adapt. And there are a lot of new photographers entering the market all the time. Mm -hmm. So could you share with Photo World a time where you kind of felt this I made it moment as a photographer? Maybe it was an award or a publication or something like that, that kind of shine to be this I made it moment. You know, I think that I think that really kind of happened um, when other photographers started hiring me to shoot their weddings. And that seemed to me like such a compliment. Um, I was shooting probably 25% of my weddings were for other photographers. And I think that was that was kind of like, wow, you know, these people trust me to take their photographs. They're in the industry. You know, um, maybe sometimes they were wedding photographers, fine art photographers, um, coordinators were contacting me to shoot their wedding. And, you know, when I started out, I kind of had all these little things like, you know, oh, I'd, I'd love to be if I could just if I would just be published in a magazine, that would be so cool. And it, it definitely is so cool. Um, and I, I think probably my most proud moment with the magazine was Town & Country. Um, that was kind of a big one for me to be like, wow. And the not national, uh, you know, a national publication that's going to sit on the shelves for six months and, and go out to 300,000 people. It's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. It's yeah. pretty cool. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's just surreal a little bit, um, you know, and it, I think it'll, I think it'll be fun. What I think about with that is just those going on after me and maybe, you know, like my grandchildren or my great grandchildren looking and saying, you know, like great grandma had these pictures in a magazine. She was a photographer. You know, maybe they'll think that's cool. I don't right. know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you never know where it all could lead to in the end. So, I mean, that's kind of a cool thing to sit and think about. You know, if we get too yeah. deep, we're all going to realize how small we are in this world. But so we'll, we'll <laughs> move to the next <laughs> next part here. And during your photography career so far, what is the best advice you have received? Oh, wow. The best advice I've received. I would have to say, know your client. And that can be really hard, especially starting out. Know your client. Figure out who your client is. And make sure that you're marketing to that client. Um, because it's easy to get muddled and a lot of different things. And maybe I like to shoot a lot of different things. Maybe I like to do day in the lives or lifestyle or documentary, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to put all that out there, or maybe that needs to be a separate, a separate space apart from my wedding, wedding work, but just knowing your client, figuring out who your client is. And then of course, just, you know, treat, treat your clients wonderfully how you would want to be treated. I would rather have my client and focus on the client that, that works for me and that we work well together and have fewer of them and provide a better service and experience for them than to take on, you know, double that, but not, but not really photographing the kind of person or the kind of couple that is, is really kind of were the best fit. So I think know your client and also if you're not a good fit for someone, don't be afraid to just, you know, refer that person to somebody else who maybe has a different style of photography or personality or what, you know, might fit better for them. Right. right. So finding your client, that's huge. <laughs> Photo world. I, I've heard this before and I think it's really helpful to do something to the effect of writing down your perfect client. Not the perfect client you want, the most wealthy client you'd like to have. Be realistic about where you are with your photography. And I mean, you're only lying to yourself if you don't, but this can help if you are true to it. 
write down your perfect client. Who are they? What kind of income do they have? What kind of personalities do they have? What age are they? What kind of budget or wedding scale are they, you know, going to plan out here? And where do you fit into that? And you're going to start finding that if you can target to who you're looking for, they are already looking for you. So you can start meeting each other along the way and that will expand your business. And then as you're changing and growing, you can go through that process again. In one word, it's niche. Niche down, mm -hmm. find where you're supposed to be. So it's it's great advice to hear that. Definitely. Thank you. Lee, if you had to start your photography all over, I'm not going to be totally <laughs> mean here. You can have the same gear and the same knowledge that you have today. You don't have a website. You don't have a business. What's the first thing you do to start a photography business? I think the first thing I would do is shoot. You have to go out and just shoot, shoot, shoot. You can't. I mean, you can't do that too much. I would want, I would, I guess I would want to go out and create some work. The next thing I would do is probably get in touch with other photographers in my area and network with them and second shoot for them and build up relationships that way. Right now, um, social, social media, it's huge. When I started, it wasn't. Um, so putting stuff out there on social media, Instagram, Facebook, um, I don't use Twitter, <laughs> but anyway, um, so I think those would be, you know, get the work, network and make friends and meet other photographers and, and get the work out there that those would be the things you would really have to concentrate on. Yeah. Just get started. Go do it. You know, do the work. And we say that yes. a lot here on taking talk picks, just do the work because nobody else is going to you know do it for you. You're not going to hear the phone ring unless the work is getting done. So get out there and do the work. Do you have an app or an internet resource that you think Photo World could benefit from knowing about? Oh, wow. Yikes. <laughs> an app or an internet resource. I, you know, I just, I guess I would say, um, as far as an internet resource, what has kind of happened with Facebook, um, you know, there used to be these photography forums and you join them and you paid a fee and it was, there were people, you know, all over. But since Facebook has kind of come out, the forums have closed down, but Facebook groups have popped up. And so I, you know, I'm in a couple and I think that if first find your local photographers and then, um, you know, you might find a specific interest group, whether it's weddings or portraits or maybe even something more specific than that. But I, I guess I would have to say, you know, just, just using, uh, I mean, that is huge. I mean, well, technology has just given us totally changed the game and given us the chance to, to learn from people all over and share with people all over, um, whether it's through Facebook or clearly your, your podcast, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. um, and our Ted talks. I mean, just, it's just amazing. So you now have the opportunity to build a relationship and become friends with somebody who lives somewhere else and you have common interests and, and common goals and share with each other and support each other. Wow, that's big. I can't believe I haven't said that word yet. Support each other. Yeah, so that, I think that's kind of, you know, where we are right now. But also, don't forget to have that real face-to-face -face person contact. That's so important, too, so with your, with your local people. Right. So. Yeah, and with those Facebook groups, go ahead and contribute. Don't just join them and watch everybody else, you know. Contribute to oh, the definitely. group in, in a lot of ways. Share your stuff. Be prepared for some honest feedback, you know. Mm -hmm. But then, um, you know, be helpful in doing the same for others. So, you know, those are exactly. a good resource for sure. We always need a camera when we shoot for sure. So aside from having the camera body, what is one piece of gear that you could not live without? My 50 millimeter 1.2. 1 1.2. <laughs> are you a Canon user? I am Canon. Okay. I am. I don't think yeah. Nikon does the 1.2 thing. So yeah. And I, I, and I don't think it matters which, which, um, brand you decide to go with i'm not i'm not dug into canon or you know anti-nikon i think you just pick what i i went with canon because canon was what i had for film cameras and i already had a few lenses so that just made sense for me to continue down that road but um i i use i use my 50 and my 24 most most of a wedding day um and then we'll get out the other ones but I'm, I'm always have my 50. I love my 50. I love good so. prime. There's nothing sharper. So yeah, I agree yeah. on those prime lenses being uh, a really valuable thing. And if you're a zoom lens photographer and you have one prime lens in your bag, don't forget about it. 
because every time you put it on, you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot. I really love this. So, yeah, um, (laughs) because I have a mix of both. So, yeah, someone told me a long time ago, zoom with your feet. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. Simple and true. So, yes. Well, we're about to wrap it up here for our interview today, and I really appreciate your time. But could before we go, could you share one parting piece of guidance, the best way Photo World can reach you, whether it's website or Facebook or other social media, and then we'll say goodbye. Sure. Um, well, my website is just LeeMillerPhotography.com, um, and my email is Lee at LeeMillerPhotography.com. I'm finding that I text a lot more with clients, so my that information is is on my website, so that's probably just the best way to get a hold of me. So Very cool. Do you have a parting piece of guidance for Photo World to take with them today? I think, uh, I, I mean, I don't think I have anything other than kind of what I've said. I guess if I would recap, just say, you know, work on your relationships. It's all about relationships. I feel like building trust and trust with other professionals, trust with your clients. Um, it's very easy in photography to become isolated. And that was something that I wasn't really prepared for when I went from an office job full of people to working by myself. So I think just getting out there, you know, um, networking and even, you know, lunch with your clients and stuff. I, I, I have some clients that have become very good friends. So I think just it's all about it's all about relationships and and, you know, treating people like you want to be treated and being genuine and real. And it's you know, it really is an extraordinary um, experience and opportunity. I have met people that I clearly never would have met. And this has taken me places I never would have gone. And it's 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 been great. It's hard work, but it's been great. And I love it. Photo World, you know, very well, you can find all the ways to get in touch with Lee. Um, and follow her work. And just so you know, hit up the show notes page by going to takingtalkpics.com. Search in the search bar for Lee. It's L-E-I-G-H, just so we don't miss you. L-E-I-G-H. <laughs> and her show notes page will pop right up. We'll have all that great information and the resources we've discussed today. Lee, I cannot thank you enough for your time today and sharing such great value. Photo World thanks you and happy shooting. Thank you, Robert. Are you loving taking talk pics? Maybe you are starting out or wanting to refine your skills in a new area of your photography. Like I say on the show, we are always learning, and that learning doesn't have to stop. At the College of DuPage, their photography program is amazing. I should know. I'm a former student, and now I'm an instructor at the school. Visit cod.edu forward slash photo for more information on their program. Not local to the Chicago area? That's okay. The College of DuPage photography program is now offering online courses. Just check the course catalog for what fits your schedule. Again, that's cod. Edu slash photo for more information. Thank you, Photo World, for tuning in to another great episode here on Take and Talk Picks. I hope you got the amazing value that I did out of this episode in interviewing our featured photographer for today. If you'd like to learn more about this photographer and the other photographers that we have interviewed in the past, head to takeandtalkpicks.com. 